Rest in peace. They'll be like, I am stupid. Oh, baby. Because it's just that juicy. That's what we're talking about. Hey, hey, okay. Hello, I'm Tori, I'm Baptist, and I go to Mount Hebron in Connecticut. Hi, my name is Natasha Supis Henry. I'm a Christian baptized. Hi, my name is Katrina. I am Baptist, and I go to the Abyssinian Baptist Church. I am a bedside Baptist. I skip some Sunday. I have to be honest. I'm not one of the by the book Christians. So I would say a bedside Christian. I like to brunch on Sunday, so sometimes I miss service, but I love the Lord. <laughs> Fish fry for me, since my background is from Haiti, we love fish. Started back in the slavery days where they would have their day off from the field, working on the fields, and they would go fishing. People call me Chef Tasha. If you know any Caribbean friends, <laughs> first thing we do when we get the fish, we clean the fish, and after when the fish is clean, now you start to put some flavor to it. I use red sniper fish. I did not use peanut oil. I really use vegetable oil. I did bring a side today because I want you to focus on the fish. My fish fry tastes like heaven. I'm in heaven. <laughs> Everyone at my church love it. It's perfect. Seigneur Jésus, Merci pour ce beau repas. Amen. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I smell the lemon. Let me take the lemon away. So I see a lemon, a broccoli. Okay, it looks a little wilted. Okay, like it don't been through some things, <laughs> right? In an overcooked piece of fish. It's not thick enough to be cod. Maybe like snapper. I want to believe that all people are godly. So yeah, a godly woman made this plate. It does have texture, it does. So you could tell like she coated it well. You can see the different seasonings and spices that are here. Interested to try it. Good Lord. <laughs> it's okay. So the taste is good. It's just the inside is dry. But it's actually better than I thought it was gonna be. Y'all got some water? <laughs> I'm tasting like paprika, I think. Maybe Old Bay. I think for the coating, I think she probably used breadcrumbs. Doesn't feel flourish. It's a little heavy. You could taste like maybe the paprika, some salt. There's more fish than breading. Could have been fried a little less. I'm not touching the broccoli. <laughs> I'm gonna give this fish a six. It's good, but it's um, just a little stiff. Taste-wise, I would give it a seven. It does taste really good. It is a little peppery. You can definitely tell that she is a godly and a virtuous woman, okay? You can tell that she put love and some soul into this. So today I prepared boneless fried whiting and I used peanut oil. The way I prepared my fish fry is I rinsed off the fish with tap water, then I dried it with a paper towel, then I put it in my special seasoning, and then I fried the fish on both sides and then put them in the oven for another 10 minutes. I didn't get the side memo, but <laughs> it's crunchy, it's savory, it's a little salty. I'm going to win today because my fish is good. And I don't need any sides, by the way. God is great, God is good. Let us thank him for our food, amen. Oh, okay. This fish is swimming solo <laughs> on this plate. This looks like a tilapia. This, to me, automatically looks like whiting, like the shape of it. Mmm, smell good though, smell good. I see the seasoning, but I can't really like smell it. Mm-hmm, I love this. It's flaky. Look at that flakiness. Okay, I'll give, I'll give her that, okay. Mm. All right, I'm definitely not rushing for water for this one, okay? 
Something's missing. Definitely needs seasoning. What's the flavor? Come on now. What's the flavor? We need to call on the ancestors, okay? We need to call to the ancestors for this one. Bringing this to church. People want to enjoy this. What's the flavor? Mm -mm. So I would have expected like some garnish, some color, some contrast. I need more. I need more in my plate. Come on. <laughs> this is no. No, thank you. Next. It has a very, very mild flavor. It, it really does. But I feel like if she added a little more, it could definitely be elevated. Like when I just first look at it, yes, it looked like, wow. I give it a five. A five. I'ma give her a good hardcore six. There's no epice. Pas gagne epice non bagay la. Moi j'ai un manque epice. No, no spice, mm mm. Traditional Southern style fish would be catfish, your porgy, your whiting. And today I have porgies, okay? It's large and flaky. It has a sweet flavor to it and it fries really well. It does have the bones in it, so you have to be careful. I have cabbage here mixed with some red peppers, some turkey bacon, because I don't eat pork. And then I also have some potato salad. Now, if your potato salad isn't yellow, it's not right, okay? And then I also have honey cornbread here with my homemade whipped strawberry butter. My fish fry is unique, honey. It is seasoned to perfection and to the ancestors liking, okay? I mix mine the traditional old school Southern style way with yellow cornmeal mixed with a little bit of flour and with the seasoning, the herbs and the spices. And I'm telling you, it is so delicious. Most high, I ask that you please bless this food and give it the nourishment that we need to survive. In your son's Christ's name, I'm on. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, wow. What I see right now, I see joy. <laughs> because I love what I see right now on my plate. This is a Thanksgiving plate, and my plate is like a, like a side. Ooh, smell amazing. Thank you, Father God. Yes. I think that this type of fish is a catfish. This really looks like a red sniper. But I could be getting catfish too. Like maybe this is not a Christian woman that made this. Oh, I could smell the lemon juice. Okay. I see cornbread and I see cabbage and a potato salad. Who don't love a potato salad? But I can tell that there's definitely a lot of um, seasoning on this fish. And sometimes less is more. Okay. Okay. No, come on. Okay. <laughs> What's going on? For this one, there's definitely more crust than fish. Oh no, 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 no. God, you just saved my life. What is this? That's a bone. I do see bones, I do. Like one, two, three, four bones, come on. Mm -mm. No, it's a no. Definitely like the other fish better than this one. <laughs> What's happening here? No. Mm, I, I, mm. No, 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 no. <laughs> Another bone, what's going on? This would not go over well in my house. Ay, ay, ay. It's good though. Mmm, mmm, this is yummy. No, no. When you bring that to church, make sure young, young kids don't eat it. This is very serious and very dangerous. I taste some spices. I can't put my finger on exactly what it is, but I don't like it very much. Mm-hmm, the crunchiness is there. Oh yeah. I do want to try this cabbage. The cabbage is good. This person know how to cook. I do want to try the cornbread. I like this cornbread. This is good. <laughs> Thank you, God. This is good. You see right here? It's a little burnt. I don't eat potato salad that much. No. I am in heaven. There's the flavor. So it's a yes for the cabbage. It's a yes for the cornbread. It's a no for the potato salad. And it's a big no for the fish. On a scale of one to 10, five for the fish, but overall, with the side, a beautiful seven, yes. The fish alone, I say like a two, maybe a three. I'm a Christian, so I say a three. Including the sides, I would have to give it like, like a six. It's like over seasoned. You don't need that much seasoning for fish. First thing first, thank you God for the gift, for the blessing. I would just like to thank 
the hands and the teachings of my late grandmother. Is this a joke? I don't really think I lost. All praises to the Most High as well for giving me this palette. What next? What next? A book? Yes, maybe a book. <laughs> Let's not do this again. Mm -mm. No, it's edible. Get some help, baby. Hi, my name is Mimi. You may remember me. Mm-hmm. Now that's what I'm talking about. Take a good look. Mm-hmm. I'm unforgettable. Hi, my name is Sandra. You may have seen me. I was previously in the sweet potato pie challenge. No. I'm here to redeem myself. Hi, guys. I'm back. Your favorite with chef, Chef Tasha. And a potato salad? Who don't love a potato salad? And today we are trying other grandmas. Pineapple ups and down. Upside down. Oh, ups and down. Upside down. Upside Pineapple upside down cake. It's one of the best family desserts because it's one of the simplest desserts. I grew up on this cake. Traditionally, we made it in the skillet. It's my favorite cake to make with my family. It brings back memories of comfort. Everyone love it. So what we have here is my moist, delicious pineapple upside down rummy cake. I used the Bacardi Gold Rum in this cake. I put the pineapples inside a bunt pan and I stood them up instead of lying them flat. And of course, pineapple upside down cake has to have cherries. And then of course, a little dollop of whipped cream. Don't be surprised if it melts in your mouth because it's just that juicy. I think I'm gonna win today because I think the rum is just undeniably a flavor enhancer. Oh. That's different. The smell is not that strong. I don't feel so bad about my cake right about now. The whipped cream, I'm a little bit confused about that. Man, what is going on? No. I don't see pineapple. <laughs> we got a lot of sogginess going on here. I'm scared. Oh boy. Rest in peace, love. I'm done with that. The cake is pretty heavy. I don't taste the pineapple. I would not even feed this to my cat. I think the extra green sugar make the cake too sweet. If green is for the luck of the Irish baby, your luck has just run out. This is a leprechaun no. I don't usually eat my pineapple with whipped cream, but let's try. Maybe that will help. Mm-mm. Mm-mm, no. Grandma caught snatched back. It's not for me. <laughs> it's definitely not for me, uh-uh. If I have to, I will remove the whipped cream. It's like a, a wet pamper. You know how they bubble up? I will not give that to my grandkids because it's too sweet. They will have too much energy. Is this Sandra from the sweet potato pie? Is this her cake? I think this is her cake. She always trying to put liquor in something. On a scale one to 10, I love the presentation and I love the fact they have to eat cherry. I find it very difficult to rate this cake. Don't hate me, but it's six. <laughs> I would give this a, uh, a one. No disrespect. I think we need to try it again or maybe not drink while we're cooking. Don't add liquor. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Today, it's about Mimi's Pineapple Upside Down Cast Iron Skillet Cake. Everybody loves my cake. Everybody. This real Southern stuff right here. Look at it. Look at it. You got your marshmallows. You got your pineapples with your maraschino cherries. The topping is not just cinnamon, baby. It is Heath toffee English bits. And this was two layers. This is made in a skillet. I went old school on you. Okay? I should win. I really should. Seriously. You smell a tad burnt. Mes amis, ça y est là. What is this? What is this? Wait a minute. What is that? It looks like a pineapple cheesecake. This right here, this part feels like cheesecake. Wait, you really want me to try this? Eh? Mm -mm. Oh my. Oh. <laughs> that 
texture didn't agree with me. It's so dry. The whipped cream was to cover the burn. <laughs> Seriously, y'all, is this a cake or is this a cheesecake? The fuck, it's stick on it. <laughs> I can't. This has got to be a joke. Y'all just want me to act silly. That's what it is. <clears throat> cake should be fluffy. <laughs> fluffy. <laughs> It's very dense, so maybe they have too much batter. Maybe it was just in a pan that was too small or it cooked too fast. Oh, this is the worst point. <laughs> I'm way. Ajay. I should win. I really should. This cake, um, the pineapple, the whipped cream, none of that really did anything for me on this cake. You want me to vote? No. I'm a Christian woman, okay? This is a two. The pineapples and the, and the cherries are one and a two. A beautiful two for the effort. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Don't like it. I will never bring something like this to my family. Not even to my the people I don't like. My pineapple upside down cake is the best because I put some Haitian rum on it and people love it with the little coulis of cremas tel maximum. And also I do creme brulee, the sugar on top of the pineapple. It's everything. I know I'm going to win for a second time. Let's go. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, this is pretty. This is beautiful. I don't know about this dead ass flower though. Kudos to this person. Uh-oh, I got some competition. Smell like pineapple. It smells pineapple-y. Cream brulee, okay. This cake or cheesecake? This don't look like it's done. It's good, tastes like pineapple upside down cake. Very moist. I think it's decent. I hate to sound cliche and say, where's the flavor? Where's the flavor? It could stand a little more taste. I wouldn't say it's missing anything. It's good, it's just wet. I don't like that. You know how some people can win off their looks? There you go. I like the presentation, I like the taste. I think the idea of it was absolutely wonderful. It's all right. The cake is moist, I give it that. It just needs a little something. Overall, I'm gonna give it a six. I give it a six because it's edible. This warm, I'm sure would taste totally different because there's elements in this pineapple thing that, you know, need that heat so the taste buds can start popping around. Unbelievable, yes! I want to say thank you to God for blessing me with the gift of cooking. Everybody's taste is different, so you like what you like and you don't like what you don't like. You know, haters gonna hate. That's what they do, that's their job. They were sent here on earth to hate other people. It was made from love. This is store bought, I'm not gonna eat no more. Hi, my name is Valerie, and I am a mother of three. And I've been making banana pudding for probably, hmm, longer than my kids have been alive. So, over 30 years. Hi, my name is Tiffany. I'm a mother of two, and I have been making banana pudding for over 10 years. Hi, my name is Kadesia. I'm a mom of a three-year-old girl. And I've made banana pudding a couple times. The key to great banana pudding is balancing the sweetness. One thing I know is after, you know, a few years of making banana pudding, I realized that it's really important that you kind of take a little of the bad stuff out. So guess what? I don't use cow milk. Coconut milk is what I do. I absolutely have to add certain things from my culture just to spice it up a little bit. Nutmeg, I know guys use nutmeg, but we use it in almost every sweet dessert. I teach myself 
basically everything. So one day I had a craving for banana pudding and I decided, go for it, make it. And I did, and it was great. I semi self-taught. My mom used to make banana pudding decades ago for me. And I decided one day, oh, I wanted to make it myself. So I put a little twist to an old fashioned family recipe. I am Jamaican, so we don't really have that there as like a dish. So I actually went on YouTube and looked at a few videos and picked out the one that had some great comments and reviews under it. I am confident. I absolutely think I can pick out my banana pudding. My banana pudding. My banana pudding. In a blind taste, taste test. test. Smells like vanilla wafers. Smells like banana. It's pretty good. Tang. The texture is a little more firmer, but I actually like this texture. This is Jello brand pudding. This is not from scratch. It's not too milky. The wafer is like just the perfect texture. It's not like crunchy. It's not soggy. The best part of the dish is the crust. But they they tried. I guess they was in a rush. That's how that worked. Let me see, hold on. This dish has some personality to it. It's smooth. I would like it to be a little smoother. You know, I won't be a hater. Wasn't bad. I'm, I'm not gonna eat no more. What I like about it is that it's Jell-O brand pudding. What I don't like is that it's Jell-O brand pudding. The worst part of the dish, it's not mine. I would give it a seven and a half. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. I'm gonna give it a four. That's, that's, that's the best I could do because I'm generous. Eight. Now this smells better. It smells fresh. So far it smells like banana pudding, but not heavy on the banana. That's a lot of banana. Mmm. <laughs> This is good. The fresh sliced bananas. This is not bad. This is pretty good. Wait. Maybe I'm hungry. Hold on. This is good. They had a lot of banana, but I get a meld of the banana, the wafer, and the pudding does not taste like milk. Now, at first, I was like, wait, maybe I just picked in the wrong place. It had a lot of banana, but it's good. This is a lot of bananas. I feel like maybe there could be a, a little more cream, maybe just to add some dimension to the taste. Whoever sliced these bananas, they, I feel like they did it with their heart. Tastes like at least it was made from scratch. This is good. This might be mine. The banana is very overpowering. I'm not tasting that uh, crust. I didn't get a crunch of a cookie. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I kind of come down a point on it because of that. I would say 8.5. This is pretty good. i give it an eight. I would give it a solid five. Smells like crackers. This right here smells like banana. All right, this one smells good. This is why I don't use cow milk, because I taste the milk. This is it. This has to be my pudding. This is really good. If it's not my pudding, then someone is out here switching dishes. On the taste, they tried. They did try. I feel like I'm tasting the old routine. I think this is me. This is the winner. This is a great texture and consistency. I think this is how it should be. It was made from love. The pudding is, is fairly smooth, actually. I don't know if that means they made it with store-bought, but it is pretty smooth. This is really good. If this is not mine, then I need the recipe. The worst part about the dish is the overpowering taste of milk. I can't even lie. This person did very well. With the taste of milk like that, I'm gonna say maybe a six. I'll give it a nine. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a 9.5. Not a 10, because I'm not sure if it's mine. But if it is mine, then it's a 10. I think mine was the second one. I'm hoping that the first one was mine. It's between two or three. I really feel like it's number three. I better be right. <laughs> that was mine. I knew that was mine. <laughs> it was three. 
Yeah! If mine does not win today, I don't know what kind of palette y'all got, okay? But all I know is if your taste is your own and you choose your own, that's because it's your own and you taste it, you know what it tastes like. I think I stand a very good chance at winning. After trying all of the banana puddings, I think I'm still winning because this one is the best and the other two were close, they were great, but they were not number one. It's okay, get the recipe from me. Oh my gosh, I am so excited that I won, <laughs> but I knew I was gonna win. Competition, I tried to tell you. I make the best banana pudding. Listen, sophisticated palettes are not for everyone. I get it, it's okay. Sadly, the competitors don't know a uh, fantastic banana pudding when they Oh wait, I had to eat it blind? Yes. Oh, see that wasn't in the memo. <laughs> My name is Cami Middleton. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and I brought greens. I'm Denisha Kane. I'm from Los Angeles, California, but I have roots from Mississippi and New Orleans. Southern roots. My name is Tracy Johnson. I'm uh, from Pennsylvania. I live in Santa Monica now. Um, I brought my mom's recipe of collard greens, but I added a couple ingredients myself along the way. Collard greens, the key ingredient is soul. You gots to have soul. I sound like Jimmy. The key ingredient in collard greens is really good collard greens that are clean. This makes it even more fun, right? Because I can't see it. I'm gonna win today because my mom and dad was from North Carolina and my mom and dad taught me how to bake, cook, and grill, and I know my collard greens are good. Take the blindfold off? No. Oh. Okay. Right. It smells meaty. Like, I smell meat, I don't smell vegetable at all. Somebody loves meat like me. <laughs> I'm trying to find green, because I don't want to just get a whole fork full of meat. Turkey legs. I can tell. It also has bacon. You can taste that too. Okay, it's just tons of fat and grease in it. Get a mouthful of meat. Where are the greens? Do you think that they should have used bacon and turkey at the same time? I think the more meat, the better. <laughs> yeah. That was a collard green competition, but the meat is good. It's very flavorful. Okay. A serious older grandma like brought out the lard for the holidays, so, and that's that's what that was. I like this recipe. And I don't really think I would change anything about it. I like it, <laughs> but it's tasty. If you like turkey, I would definitely say this is a great vehicle for cornbread. And if that's what she's trying to do, and like you, you would sop up that cornbread in there and like eat it. That's how grandma's made it, and it's hot sauce, so she's on her way, but you know, we don't want to die nowadays eating greens. We want to be healthy and strong, so eliminate some of the fat. For smell, I'm going to give it a two, because I just smell meat. Um, a five on smell. Two. The greens actually were a decent texture, but there's just so much meat. I'm gonna also give it a two. Five on texture, is it was cooked for a period of time where it's tender enough. Yeah, it was slimy, so two. And a five on um, taste. Well done. Good try, but again, I think the grease um, was the overwhelming factor in taste. Three. For overall taste and flavor, I'll give it a three. It's pretty basic, pretty, pretty average greens. I'm gonna win because my collard greens are the best. They just taste fantastic, period. Hmm. It's 
so where's the plate? Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it has a little bit of spice like Mexican taste to it. That's pretty good. I like that. I will have that. I don't think I need cornbread with that. That's <clears throat> I'm trying to catch up on what kind of spice it is, but I'm not sure what it is. It's just it's hot. <laughs> These greens, you sure these ain't my greens? Cause these greens good. <laughs> Some people don't like hot stuff, but I do. <laughs> you can taste the flavor. Their greens are, the texture is great. They're crunchy and like they're fresh. It, and they also melt in your mouth at the same time. Yeah, whoever's greens these are, you did this, Grandma. Come on, Granny. I can't even hate on you, you did this. He's good. The other one, I, I don't want to have any more. This, I want to have more of this. Can I, can I? Can I have one more? My oldest granddaughter, she likes spicy stuff, so she probably would you know, be okay with her. But like um, the other ones, they'd be like, no. <laughs> I mean, she's, she could be my grandma. They taste very well seasoned. They have a good balance. A little bit of kick, a little bit of heat. You know, good flavor and nice texture. The best part is I want to finish the bowl. And I don't need any other accoutrement to help me. I don't need hot sauce, I don't need cornbread. I just need to eat this, this is awesome. I mean, in itself, a complete meal and there's like, it's clean and fresh and flavorful and fragrant. Good job, good job. That might be my girl, we might have to go into business together. He's good. It smells nice, I'm gonna say a nice four. No. Uh, let's say about four. Smells like greens. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a five. It said the texture was a five and the taste was a five. I think these are great. I think they're just awesome. Um, taste, I like the taste, so five. I'm gonna give it fives all the way down. Five in texture, taste, and man, I'm not even gonna be a hater. Cause they accused me of being a hater the last time when I was ranting and raving. Texture? Uh, about a three. I'm gonna win today because these greens are delicious, they're flavorful, they're 100% vegetarian, you can eat the whole pot and not feel guilty, and they're good. And I spent 30 minutes making them, I wasn't up all night. And when people find out that you can make greens like this, they'll be like, I am stupid. You are. Doesn't really have a smell or an odor. It smells green. Mm-hmm. And some greens, all right. Wow. Okay. Let's have a little. Let's see how they are. I know that tastes but I can't quite place it right now. Mm-hmm. These are good too. I don't like it. Mm-mm. Somebody put their foot in it. Mmm. Okay. They're flavorful and fresh. They're like kind of sour. Can I taste some more? I think the greens are a little bit undercooked. And I don't know what kind of seasoning it is, but I don't like it. Like someone's grandma put them in the back porch, you know? There's no coating in my mouth. There's a really complex flavors and it's like a nice fade. They're, they're chewy and that they just slide down your mouth again. Mmm. It tastes very vegetable-y. It seems like it's, you know, it's missing something when it don't have the meat. I, I don't have any advice. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell them. Maybe just start from scratch. What do you like about it? Nothing. <laughs> like not much of a smell, but there's a little smokiness in the back of it. I 
could get a whole plate of these. This is good. This is really good. Would your, how would your family react to this? Nope. <laughs> okay. So if I had to rank them with smell, I would say a three. For smell, I'm gonna go with a one. You are good. I mean, <laughs> it was redemption time. Thank you very much for setting the record straight. I told y'all I got this and I appreciate you, I really do. Zara loves them so, so she do.